with the stupid comments. 40, 40 volt max Makita XGT line. Yep. Nine and a quarter or 235 millimeter blade. Yes. HS 009G. Oh, he knows the model numbers. I do know. Can, I, I actually, I'm frothing this thing a little bit. AWS, really nice dust extraction. Yeah, which is system. a little Bluetooth module on this side. Yep. Um, flick the trigger, go straight to your Makita vac, or if you've got the module that clicks into any other vac, yep. this sucker's literally sucking away. First Very impressions, cool. big. Big. I thought, oh, ooh. <laughs> I told you that was going to happen. You idiot. <laughs> um, I thought, you know, that's big and heavy, and truth is, it's because I don't use a nine and a quarter saw very much. Yep. I use a seven and a quarter. Yep. Um, so I went, you know what, this is this is too much, and I went over to the internet, and I discovered that this is both shorter and lighter than the electric nine and a quarter inch 5900B Makita. Correct. The, the stock standard, yep. age old, tried and true unit. Which is what your, all your old boys get out, yep. all your people who need that full depth, and love their Makita, 59 double Yeah, you want to cut 75 mil sleepers, that sort of stuff. That's what you get if you need to rip them. Absolutely. 4,000 RPM, so it actually spins really nice. Yep. It's it's odd because when you've got, and we actually had one, I went out and did some cutting with Beth Builds. Okay. Had Simo there who loves the old nine and a quarter. Mm -hmm. You get that, you, you have this and you go, this sounds nice. Yeah, so the like the, the smaller saws are, are 5,000 plus. I think yep. the XGT one might have been 6,000. Oh. Um, so this is quite a drop. Okay. It's not as big as it sounds because you've got the larger blade. Yep. And therefore the teeth on the outside are rotating a bit faster because of the diameter. But it's still a significant drop off even in yep. um, speed at the outside of the blade. Yeah. But if you've got the grunt, of course. Right. That's all right because it's going to chill. It's not going to slow down. Yep. So you're not losing any as much of that speed as some of your higher speed units. Correct. When you're chowing in. I couldn't... I can't decide whether the power is better than I expected or not as much as I want. Because <laughs> on one hand, um, I kind of didn't expect this unit to be capable of ripping yep. deep LVLs, like the 70 mil LVL that mm. we were ripping. I was like, I was actually really impressed that it could do that. I would thought of it more as a cross-cut unit. Yeah, yeah, okay. On the other hand, you know, it, it's not as powerful as the electric variety, um, and you can bog it up. Yep. Um, with doing heavy ripping like that sort of thing. So yeah. it's probably as good as I could have hoped. That's true. It's a bit of a, has it completely replaced the nine and a quarter 240 volt? No. It, Not it, quite. In grunt, no. when you're really using it to its maximum capacity. Yeah. Can I switch to and tell me if I'm wrong, but the fact that this sucker is track saw capable. Ooh. So you'll notice that there's no frame along the front here. Yeah. Awesome line of sight, by the way, when you're doing that. But you can throw this thing on a track. Track capability on this thing is absolutely magnificent. So for my liking, I know you're probably not going to do an LVL. People will want to slam me. Who cares if you do a two-thirds pass when you run it on a track and then you drop the next part? Mm. Like, that's okay, yeah? For sure. So what I want to quickly to do, because you just stole it and was playing around with it, yeah. um, everybody has this natural action of having a circle saw and you use your thumb to flick open the guard, yeah? Yep. There's no big lever here on the guard. No, there's this guy here though. Yeah, correct. So there's a big black lever there. That actually pushes your guard back to get you started. Not all the way, but enough no, to get you going. enough to get you running. Which is quite nice. Correct. That's typically a plunge cut kind of feature. Exactly. So they've got a few features that would be on your dedicated tracks or type setup. Yeah. But they've also made it to suit... Your standard circuit saw. I still would like a little lever here because mm. your natural action when you're about to dock something, even dock across an LVL. Yeah. Also, you sort of you have this. We have these inbuilt things that we do. Yes. I'd still like a lever here, but that is really natural to flick it. Something that a weakness that this shares with the seven and a quarter inch one that we did a bit of a tool fight with recently. Yes. Is that this also doesn't have wonderful line of sight for a right hander. That is true. There's a lot going on here in the way of your line of sight. Yep. Um, now, obviously on a track that doesn't matter. Yep. Um, if you're just doing rough ripping of a, of a sleeper or something for the bottom of a retaining wall, whatever it might be, yep. doesn't matter that much. But um, there are times when it may matter and you can get a, you can get a visual on the blade, but it's very specific. You have yeah. to be right exactly on this angle. That's fair. But then if you have a look at other saws, Lefties like me, I love this because I'm a lefty. Yeah. And actually, ergonomically, is amazing for me. We're always flicking over and looking on the other side. 
and a lot of people will be the same with this and not see it as an issue. But we're, we're jumping into the finer things. We are, and, and I also would counter that by saying 90% of the population is right-handed. Yeah. So even though we, you know... I hear you. Yeah. We oh, do no. take a little bit of pleasure in leaving out the lefties. Oh. And in this case, we've, we've kind of hurt the righties and... <coughs> yeah. We got you back. Could have... Yeah, that's right. This was designed by a left-hander. Damn it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you are right in that. Overall, though, it's still a tidy saw... With your bevel, 22 and a half, 30, Ooh. 45, 60. Yep. You've got some positive indents on 22 and a half and 45. Yes. I stink and love that. With the track, can I just quickly go back to that for a second? I'm, sure. We're fiddling around everywhere, I know, sorry. Um, Makita, I love the fact that when you put it on the track and you run a bevel, you've got two little levers you push out here. Mm. Those levers tuck in to a part underneath the track. The saw can't fall off. No. Most, I think these are the only guys that do it. Do to do it. That when you're running a bevel, you, to start with at least, and if not continue, you got to hold your finger down onto that saw to, to stop it from actually kicking Especially off. Especially when you're right over on a 45. Exactly. With with a, a track saw, if you're doing a bevel on a track saw, you want it mint. You don't yep. want any potential wobble. Nope. So I love that they put that in um, on this, which they're thinking, I reckon, most of the time you use them as a standard nine and a quarter rip saw, but hey, we've done it track capable. Yep. We've also got the little cams under here to take into that slop out yep. of a track. That's right. So I like how that feels. There are some pluses and minuses to being a track saw. Yep. Um, the, the slight minus is that you don't get any base plate on the outside of the blade here. Yep. So for some general purpose cutting, that's a little bit annoying. Positive of that is that it enables you to cut really close to barriers. Yeah, too right. Um, you, you get a post or a fence in the way, you can cut really, really close to it. Yep. Horses to horses. I want to talk about the fence. Rip fence. Really quickly that you threw on the ground. Yep. Rip fence has two nice big long runners or legs, I'm going to call them. Yep. This is a cracking fence because it's solid. If you want to rip something nice and tight though, you will need to install a piece of timber just in here. Yeah, you can't so just rip off 10, close. 20, even 30 mil off a piece with... Nah, correct, it sits out a bit. That's a little bit annoying. I don't know why. It's a why. bit annoying, but in general, I hate fences on cirque saws. I think that's a better solution. They're saying, hey, we're going to give you the full box and dice, yep. but yeah, you've got to whack a bit of timber in there to get close. I'd rather that than just a single runner in. I hear you. I hear so, um, I like. I really like it. I, I like Makita saws in general. Think it's well thought out. It looks big at first, but it's it has some serious functions. What's the cut capacity of this? 85 mil depth, I think. Something like that. Uh, at 90 degrees, I can't remember off the top of my head on a 45, so we're going to annotate it right Well, here. it'll be in the description anyway, those oh, yep. details. Yeah. Um, that'll be, obviously, not. you'll lose a few mil if you put it on the track. Yes, that's true. Um, I really wish that I had this saw... Um, at work about a month ago, we did a big stair build and it was concrete stairs, uh, three levels. Yep. And so we were using um, big, chunky LVLs. It's formwork. Not for the formwork itself, but for the supporting of the formwork up in the air. Oh, wow. And so we cut to length so many 80 mil by 140 LVLs. And to have been able to cut them all in one slice yeah. rather than turning them over each time. Yep would have been really, really helpful, and I, I wish we had had it then. Yeah. I did bring one of them home so we could do a bit of testing, as you guys would have seen. Yep, yep. Um, oh, so that's, that's one of those. That's one of those. Yeah, right. Okay. Yep. Um, you can stall it out if you want to, Yep. Um, but I, I, I do rate what they've got here. Some people aren't a fan of Makita's handle setup, the ergonomics of it. Okay. It doesn't worry me, but again, get into your store and check it out and find out when the next... What do you, whatever you want, trade yeah. night, insiders night, whatever. Ring these companies' reps and get them out on the road. Yeah. There's job site solution people that are on the road. Make them earn their bucks and say, can I check that saw out? I want to see if it's good for me. Yeah. Get it in your hands because you're paying, paying good coin, and I reckon you'll pull the trigger on that. If you want to go and compare it to the seven and a quarter inch saw and you run it like for like in pine or something, you're probably going to find, hey, this is no faster than the, the smaller saw or it might even be a touch slower. You've got to remember this has slower RPMs and it also has a larger kerf on the blade. Yep. Not only the stock blade that it comes with, but any replacement blades are gonna have a larger kerf. It's designed for bigger, stockier things. Yeah, that's you true. You can't cut 70 by 35 pine studs and go, oh, it's not that good. Yep, yep, it's that's It's not what fair. it's designed for. Yep, that's true. 
All right. I don't know if we've got anything else to say. No. If we think of anything we've forgotten, we're going to annotate it right at the end. And so we forgot about this. But <laughs> get in stores, check it out, hit the reps up. Thanks, guys, for watching. Thank you. Bye.